Mr. Zims, and I am honored to serve as your extended devotion leader for today. And for our devotion, we're going to look in the book of Mark, chapter 14. And here we have an account of an Ill the illegal trial of Jesus before the Sanhedrin. It's in the dark of night. Jesus was very recently arrested after the betrayal by Judas with a kiss. That's a fairly long passage. Let's just get ourselves going. Focus down in on verse 61, the highlighted in blue. The high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the son of man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Conspiracy theory. Have you ever heard of a conspiracy theory? What is a conspiracy theory? We have a working definition. It's a theory that explains an event or set of circumstances as a result of a secret plot usually directed by powerful conspirators. A theory asserting that a secret of great importance is being kept from the public. Maybe you've heard of some of these famous conspiracy theories. These images are designed to connect you with some of those recalls. One of my favorites down there in the lower left. The United States didn't actually land on the moon in 1969. I think back to my days in, in junior high in particular, in high school, I heard this type of conspiracy theory from a number of, or at least a few, of my peers. My teachers and coaches hate me. Jimmy gets better grades and more playing time than me because, well, his dad is on the school board. How about very recently, the, all the conspiracy theories associated with the COVID-19 pandemic? Hey, just for the record, all of your most mature teachers now have a microchip embedded in our arms because we got vaccinated last weekend. Have you ever heard of Bible conspiracies? Yeah, there are a bunch of those. Let me give you a working definition specifically of a Bible conspiracy. A Bible conspiracy theory is any conspiracy theory that posits that much of what is believed about the Bible is a deception created to suppress some secret ancient truth. The most extreme of the Bible conspiracy theories is that, well, there actually is no God. The entire Bible is the story of God. There is no God. So the Bible is completely mythical, completely fairy tale the God myth theory. While other Bible conspiracy theories, well, they acknowledge that there is a God or gods, but related to this man Jesus, these Jesus myth theories suggest that Jesus was not God and that he was not resurrected. Yes, he was a historical figure, we'll accept that, but he was not God and he was not resurrected. Some of the classic Jesus myth theories, let's see if any of these are familiar. Yeah, they've been popping up again and again for about 2,000 years. One of them holds, this man Jesus did die on the cross, but he did not come back from the dead. In fact, the disciples stole his body and hid it away so that no one could find it. Another Jesus myth theory suggests that um, the man who actually died on the cross was not Jesus, but rather an obedient disciple lookalike. So it's no surprise that people saw Jesus alive and well later because he never actually died on the cross. He didn't even hang there. How about the theory that said, says that Jesus passed out on the cross? They thought he was dead, took him down, put him in a tomb, and he woke up later, walked out of the tomb very much alive. Or how about this one? Jesus was actually a married man. It has nothing to do with his death. But he was a married man, had children, and some of his descendants are alive today. And then maybe one of the most creative but related to his death, um, he did die. He was not resurrected. Those people that claim they saw him later actually were having a hallucination. Now, that would include all of the disciples and about 500 other people. Or maybe they saw a ghost. Bible conspiracy theories. We take ourselves back to Mark 14. 
We have here an example of a grand conspiracy, a conspiracy theory, the chief priests, the council, promoting conspiracy theory that in fact Jesus was not who Jesus claimed to be. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard you say, heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this, their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again, the high priest asked him, are you the Christ, the Son of the blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard, this, heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving of death. Here we have a dark trial in the darkness of night. And we see that the darkness cannot suppress the light. Jesus, the light of truth. We have false testimony against him, but that false testimony cannot condemn him. The conspiracy theory simply cannot be, be supported. The light prevails. Ultimately, what put Jesus on that cross? That very direct question, are you the Christ? And Jesus, who could not lie, would not ever lie. Not about this very significant truth, he said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. I am he. Blasphemy? Yes, according to Jewish law, if you proclaimed yourself as God and you're not God, that's blasphemy and that's deserving of death. The question must be asked, did Jesus lie? Just a few months before this trial, Jesus was traveling in the region of Caesarea Philippi with his disciples. And for the first time, for the first time, he posed the following question to them. But who do you say that I am? And Peter's famous reply, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Do you remember what a conspiracy is? We emphasize a secret plot, usually directed by powerful conspirators. We're going to end this devotion with this. And I would ask that your leaders guide these questions to you and with you, and then lead you in a closing prayer. Bible conspiracy? What of these Bible conspiracies, and specifically the Jesus myth conspiracies? Who might be the powerful conspirators in these circumstances? Who is the conspirator? And what might their motivation be to, to pose this, this story that this man, Jesus Christ, was God and that he was the Christ and that he is the savior of the world is Jesus this powerful conspirator? Or were the disciples? And what of those who have originated, started these Bible conspiracies, including the Jesus myths? Who started them? And why? Food for thought. God bless your day, Lincoln Lutheran. Love you all.